All right, we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming at you live from episode eight of Life on the Rocks with your host, Connor LaRock. Today's featured guest in the hot seat is my good friend, Tristan Ritchie. How you doing, my man? Awesome. How's it going? Doing very good. It's Thanks an honest having. pleasure to have you on this show. For anyone who doesn't know, Tristan Ritchie is a millennial investor. He's actually a real estate guy within the city of Sudbury. I want to start this off. Tristan, what got you started in the real estate market, getting into real estate? Well, I got to say, first of all, was investing in my first property. When I was in third year university, I bought my first rental through David Kurt. So that's the guy I work with, Team Kurt. And he, he approached me. He's like, Tristan, like, you know what you're doing. Since I've been a young kid, I've been following my dad around to all his meetings, going to see the banks for his financing, going to his showings, going to when he's doing deals. So it really got me into it. So then Dave asked me, he's like, Tristan, do you want to become a real estate agent? And I said, yeah, like you get first dibs on properties, kind of not first dibs, but you get to like see them right when they come out. So you get to learn more about it, right? So No, absolutely. It's kind of funny. From the first time I met you, I probably met you, like I've known you for years, but we actually worked together at TD Bank for anyone who doesn't know out there. And uh, Tristan was always saying, like, I can't wait to get done school. I want to get into the real estate market. We talk a lot about education, right? You talk about formal education, self-education. You're obviously a self-taught man. Obviously, you see you go out there, you promote good content. The first thing I want to hit on for anybody watching out there is, Obviously, the real estate market in the city of Sudbury alone is very saturated. There's about 350 brokers or agents, I should say. Um, and if you look at Tristan, Tristan's actually done a phenomenal job separating himself from the pack. What is it, do you think, that what do you have to do differently to kind of put yourself out there so that more people are seeing you? Well, that's why one of the reasons I joined Team Curtis because Dave also does a lot of great things and mostly is the internet. Um, obviously, we're getting to that time in our lives where everyone's on the internet even your grandparents are using facebook instagram and all that so the, the, where you really get a lot of eyes so when you're trying to sell a property you want a lot of people to be able to see the property right the more the more people the more eyes that are interested in this property there's more chances they buy the property absolutely so you want to get that house in front of as many people as you can so i think social media is a great platform for that so some of the older techniques were just putting it on mls maybe the paper copies like you're hearing print is dead all the time because it kind of is like no one really prints things anymore, right? Yeah. So everything's moving towards the online. So what we're doing is we're using, taking great advantage of Facebook ads, live videos. I started doing live open houses and now a couple other agents are doing them, which is awesome. So it's easier for people to see them if you can't make it out to the open house. So just little things like that. And we pay for boosting and we do a bunch of things like that. No kidding. So that's it. So that's, it's one of those type of things. Go the extra mile for your client, put yourself out there. And that's, what's going to separate you from, I guess you could say the masses or groups. Exactly. That's what you see in other successful agents. And then the ones that I guess you could say fail. I mean, that's a tough gig, especially when there's so many people. So moving forward here for a second, you're going on about social media. Print is dead. Do you believe that? You're starting to see, obviously, I'm of the belief that the print is dying out, obviously. You see so many articles online. You can print them for free. You don't have to buy the paper. We literally get news right in our fingertips. How do you, how do you leverage that? Like, what is it for you exactly? Like, how do you specify? Do you have certain markets you want to tap into? Or maybe quite possibly you're like, well, this is what I want to do. Since you're, you're a young investor, you have two properties, right? As well, like, how do you tap into that social media market? What are some tricks for people? Uh, I would consider Tristan a social media actually expert. Uh, if we put it that way, he's went through the courses. Uh, we own a company together, actually co-founded one called Social Rise Revenue Marketing Agency. How do you do that? Like, how do you distinguish yourself on this online platform opposed to real estate? Like, what are some of the key things we got to do? So, there, it's actually not as hard as people think. Really, mm -hmm. you can. There, there's some cool sites online that you can use to learn about it. So, Udemy is one. You can buy pretty much a class or a course that you take. They give you exercise and everything so I took a few of those courses um, so and I'm just learning on my own right testing so you do a split test you try two different pictures see which one works the best and you, you kind of teach yourself about this but really it's the the advertising on Facebook that's probably the biggest and most important one and you, you can put as little as two dollars if you want and just do a little test run see if that's working out for you um, you can you can get super duper specific like you can go down to a two mile radius you only want to advertise to people that are working in the Tom Davies Square. You can do that kind of thing. So if you're aiming for, if you have a little coffee shop right by Tom Davies Square, maybe you want to try and attract all the people from Tom Davies Square. Absolutely. Do a little two mile radius ad and there you go. And you can get some people. So that's pretty much how you, you can really take advantage of um, social media and you link all the accounts together, which gives you better SEO for your website also. 
So, so SEO for anyone who doesn't know search optimized. Yeah, sorry. All right, go ahead. Yeah, search engine optimization. There it is, right there. So that's good. Okay, so I, I think that's such an important factor, especially in today's society. We have so much noise. Even us right now, we're probably on a live video. There's still so many noises scrolling through. You're like, oh, I've seen this photo 50 times, but you just keep doing that thing. So it's a matter of breaking free. I think not enough people actually realize. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he went went on about there's three things you can do. You have organic followers, then you have the ones you borrow, and then you also have the ones you buy. I think a lot of us aren't tapping into the buying and the borrowing of those followers or those likes. I guess that's the likes. That, that's you can't you can't you can't buy followers. Those are those are fake. Yeah, followers. yeah, I don't want the yeah. yeah yeah that's that doesn't work for you. <laughs> no, exactly. That's not what you want. You want to build an organic yeah. following. For you, so I mean, if we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff, who influences you? Like primarily, so in real estate, I mean, it's pretty open. They, there's a lot of leaders within that field. Like who influence, influences you? You you study these guys like Cardone, or you study these guys like Gary Vaynerchuk. You like Tony Robbins. Like we went there one time. Like who do you, who do you like to follow? Uh, to be honest, my dad is my biggest mentor for real estate investing. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one who gave me the confidence to pretty much buy property. It's not as tough as people think, but it's such a big purchase that you just need the to understand that you can just go for it and buy one if you want and learn a little of the ropes and all the tricks. So I did learn that from my dad. Uh, when I started, kind of like a lot of people, I used to watch Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone and all them. But now, like, I'm starting to believe that understand what they're saying, like, just put your mind to it, go for it. So I kind of don't spend my time watching their videos because it's kind of like, you know, it's like wasting my time. Um, but I still believe in what they're saying. So for people that need that confidence, need that boost, or they got some great ideas and tips. But other than that, I try to just list, watch more educational videos or exactly. podcasts, which there are a lot of great ones out there that you can learn and read books. I love reading. Absolutely. I don't, readers are leaders. That's the joke, I guess you could say. So would you argue that execution is probably the most imperative thing in terms of business? You know what I mean? It's being able to execute. We can all start businesses. We can go get our master business license from – uh, you know, the Ontario government, 60 bucks, 60, yeah. exactly, literally 60 bucks. Yeah. I've done it three times, <laughs> you know, yeah. but would you argue that execution is probably the most imperative thing? If you look at all these guys like Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, all your top leaders, they all predicate, mm -hmm. i.e. assert that idea of having to execute. Is that what makes you successful? Because when I look at you, I look at a lot of other people's millennials primarily. And what you're starting to see is a lot of excuses. And I'm not trying to be rude, but a lot of the time they're like, well, I can't find this job. And I was on a video the other day. And it's like, well, you can't find that job. Well, what exactly are you going to do? And that's where we start. It's like, how are you going to frame this? What exactly are you going to do to push you forward? So would you argue that it's execution? You have to be able to execute, i.e. strategize, which will, in fact, lead to your success. Is that what makes you successful? 100%. Um, execution, just doing it, is what's going to get you to the next level. And it's, it's getting past that fear. Like, I understand. And there's a lot of people get anxiety now. I've had it. You know, like, it's, it's understandable. Like, you get nervous in front of an interview before we started this. I was a bit nervous, understandably, right? And you get that through everything that. you do. No, I'm kidding. No, go ahead. I'm just kidding. I'm human. I'm human. Everyone else is too. So you, you're going to be nervous when you're doing things or before you – if you have a business idea, let's say, before you launch it, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be like, what if this doesn't work? You're going to have those doubts, but you just push through them. And you got to think in the way that the last – let's for an example, the last house I bought, I had to – because I'm um, – and I work off commission. The, the banks don't use my income and whatnot. So I had to wait a little bit. But I partnered with someone to buy the last house I bought. So with my partner, I convinced him that if we lose money on this house, when we're rich in 10 years, we're going to use that as a story and laugh about it. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, if we fail on this, which the chances are really slim investing in real estate if you do it the correct way. I was like, if we do fail, we're going to look back. Like in 10 years, we know we're going to be rich. That's our goal. In 10 years... We're going to look back and tell people the story like, oh, when we were young, 23 years old, we bought a house and we, we lost a ton of money on it. Ha, ha, ha. You know, like we learned a huge lesson from that. And I think that's one of the best lessons you can make is by failing. And that's what everyone always tells you. So there's just different scales of failing. So you can start businesses that have like little to no initiated initiation costs or whatnot. And the risks are way lower. So just go for it. That's it. No, there you go. That's the motivational thing. A lot of people are like, well, what do I got to do? They're trying to think of all these recipes and things you can do. And I'm of the same belief as Tristan. It's like, just put yourself out there. Come out swinging. I like to say that everyone that watches my stuff, it's like, come on out swinging. I think that's one of the most important things Tristan just hit on is the factor that how do you manage risk? And a lot of people that you see are highly successful. They don't really see it as risk. It's like, well, it's very calculated. Um, so it's one of those things, I think, just getting over that barrier and saying, okay, this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to create it. So I want to touch base on this then. If we're going to transition in, 
Um, take, for instance, the millennial generation. I always like to pick on millennials, being that I'm one of them, right? Um, what do you find is one of the biggest problems with our millennial generation? And not taking a critique, but just something that being that we're in this market, we are those type of people. What do you think is the biggest problem? And how do you think we can battle through that problem? Oof. That's a deep question, but I mean, I think, <laughs> I think we can unpack it. I think it's a great question. Okay, that, that one I might have to think about a little bit. Andrew. Think about but, that. But um, what, what I'm seeing a lot is, like we just said, though, is basically just going for it, doing it. Um, focus, I think, is really tough right now because of all the social media. Like, even myself, sometimes I'm on my computer and then I get a, because I'm in real estate, right? I got to always be on my phone. Always, so, yeah. like, I'll get like a, I'll go on Facebook to start doing a Facebook ad or something, and then I end up on my timeline, and like two minutes later, I'm like, holy jeez, like I just looked at 20 Facebook posts, yeah. like read, watched a video. Um, Next thing you know, you're, he's, he's buying something. Next thing yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, you get stuck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, like, where does it end? And then you go like, okay, I got to check Instagram now or whatever, or post another picture. So it's hard to stay focused with all that stuff going on. So what I've started to try to do and is put my phone in sleep mode for like 30 minutes at a time. So maybe I won't be able to answer that phone call then, but I'll just get them back later. Exactly, yeah. But it really helps you focus and get a lot of things done at once um, without being distracted. But that, that's tough. Like even walking around, like I rarely ever walk around without having my phone out just because there's always something to look at. But sometimes you just got to be in that mindful state. And actually, that's one of the books I'm reading right now. Okay. About mindfulness because it's one of my problems. That's one of the most important yeah. things. Yeah. So I, I would argue actually probably the same thing, that it's a distraction issue. It's like, how can we stay focused on something in my whole life? Same idea as you. It's like people always tell me you got to get focused. You have to get specific. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can stare at this desk for five minutes. And it's like, hey, no, no, that's not focused. It means, you know, having something done at the right time, getting specific on it and heading forward with clarity. I think that's one of the most important things. What do you think? So if I was a young millennial out there, let's say, okay, since I, I'm taking a hit at our generation in a positive way. But if I was a young millennial and I didn't know what to do coming out of university, what would be some, some of the advice you'd give? Just an idea, is that too hard? Like, is that a tough one? Coming out of university? Or yeah, coming out of university, you don't know what you want to do. That's a, a that's job? A, yeah, for looking for a job. Yeah, actually, I, I had one of my friends, he asked me to talk to his little brother about this because he's looking for a job. And what, what I was told by my parents when I was looking for a job when I, was, I think I was 15, or, and they told me to apply everywhere, so McDonald's and all that stuff. And at first, I, I thought like, I was a little bit above that, but... I guess a lot of people do think like that. Yeah, it's wrong. But then yeah. I realized, like, it's a job. You know, we're, even at working at McDonald's, you learn so many of their, the ways that they train their employees. They're an established brand, and they know how to do business, right, because they've been in business for so long. So I, I looked at it as a learning opportunity. But also that when I was applying for the jobs, my parents kept telling me, like, call them back. Call them back. Annoy them. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be that annoying guy that's looking for a job. And, but then I put myself in the shoes of the employer and – owning a business, you kind of understand this. You're like, if you have three resumes in front of you and two of them dropped off the resume, they talked to you a little bit. And then the third guy, maybe he has a little bit less education, but he's calling you every three days saying, Oh, did you look at my resume yet? Did you, exactly. are you going to hire me? Do you have a spot left still? Like I'm obviously going to hire this guy. Like he's motivated. That guy wants to work. Absolutely. So if you look at yourself from the other shoes of the employer, they want that. It's not annoying them. It's actually, Making them want to hire you. It's showing you're hungry. I think that's, yeah, being hungry, going for it, the hustle, that's what it is. It's a hustle. It's all about that hustle game yeah. in, t in today's generation, I guess you could say. Yeah, I find that's one of the most important things. It's a market I want to tap into, and, and you hit it right on the nail. It's like getting that hunger, showing that initiative, taking the extra step. It's the same thing. I use this analogy so many times because I've seen it. I lived it. I was going to go to law school. Everyone had the same resume. We all had an 80% in school. We all had the similar score on the LSAT. We all were part of the same law groups. So what's going to happen when you're flipping that resume in? They're going to look in, okay, I've seen this kid. I've seen this. You need that distinguishing factor. And in terms, sometimes you might not have a very good distinguishing factor, but it might be your work ethic. It might be like they always say ta or, or hard work trumps talent. I think that's when it comes into play when it comes to that kind of stuff like that. So transitioning here. Or go ahead. Go ahead. I agree. I agree. That's what I'm no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I find that. Like, yeah. it, especially with our generation, I think – a lot of people are looking at the wrong wrong lens. They're trying to say that, you know, we're in one of the craziest times in human history. It's so difficult, which it is. I agree. There's a lot of noise out there. A lot of jobs are getting cut. But on the contrary to that, I think we live in one of the greatest times in human history. A lot of jobs are getting made. That's what I mean. Exactly. People need to fix that technology. People need to create that technology that's stealing the jobs. But I think it's... It's all evening in itself up. Exactly. It's that market that's changing. Yeah. Anticipate where the market's going to go. And I think that's another thing with, with us. I know we're young and we're coming out there, but one of the things I've always admired in you, Tristan, was the fact that you're not scared to put yourself out there. 
I know we've we known each other for a few years, but that's the thing. We teamed up at one point because you were able to push through things. People are sitting there like, oh, Tristan's promoting this. He's doing this. But at the end of the day, you're living what you want. You're doing what you want to do. You're living that dream. And a lot of people are showing up to their nine-to-five job and, and nothing against them. But at the end of the day, I always say, I know you need a paycheck. You need to pay bills. But if you're just showing up to that job and it's sucking the life right out of you, I think it's time maybe to make a change, figure out how you can start making money on the side or doing something different or perpetuate you. Yeah, like a way around that is if you have a business idea, just work on it one hour a night, maybe two hours a night. Because what else are you probably doing? Like a lot of like Instagram. Netflix now? Yeah, Instagram. Like Netflix. Netflix. You watch one episode, you're hooked, right? We all do it, obviously. But yeah. like if, if you just like spend a little time doing what you're passionate about and make sure that you're passionate about it, you're starting a business or something, something that you're enjoying to do an hour a night or talk to people that might be interested or like, I love talking to anyone that has a business that started a business. Like I meet with a lot of small businesses, um, invested in one. So that's like my passion. I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm never going to retire. That's what I'm going to do until, that's I'm, it. until I know yeah. I just want to invest in small businesses and help them grow. Cause that's just what I love to do. No, absolutely. Okay. So crossing over here and to, to include this interview, cause I mean, we've got a lot of energy, a lot of facts So we're hitting a lot on millennials. Sorry guys for any of the millennials out there, but, where do you see yourself going in? Like, what can we expect from Tristan Richie? You know, you got the social media marketing agency. You're an investor, a young investor. You have properties already. You're a real estate agent. What can we expect next from you? Is there going to be an app coming out? Maybe? Hey, a book? Hey, got it. I've been pumping them to get a book out. Like, what can we see next yeah. from you, Tristan? Started writing it, but I've been too busy. That's all right. But eventually, it'll, it'll come out there on real estate investing. Um, I want to teach people how to invest in real estate. I believe it's one of the best investments you can make in general. Um, sure. I made a video on it, how comparing it to like mutual funds or whatnot. And there is a little bit more risk and you have to deal with tenants. So that's a little bit of work, but it's, I believe it's a huge investment. But in terms of what I'm doing in the future is I, I don't really know. Um, I do know that real estate being a sales rep with Caldwell Banker, Charles Marsh and Team Curtis is like my main focus. That's where I spent all my, most of my time. And then when I have spare time, that's when I work on my side ideas. Um, but I did tell, when I was 19, I told my parents, well, I told everyone, my friends, my parents, that by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have bought one house a year. So I'm I'm back one right now. I'm only at two. But it's it's on its way. And um, once they can start counting my, my income at the bank. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to take some time. So yeah, no, no, that's awesome. So you're going to see, I'm assuming we're going to see a lot of different things. Obviously, I'm you're hoping, have, yeah. You're hoping, yeah. Do you feel like, I, I find that this was a mentality, one of my friends had always said, he's like, you know, this, the people that are specified obviously get paid more than the generals. Are you that type of person that wants to put your eggs in four different baskets or do you like to stay focused, which is real estate, but then kind of bounce around a little bit? Is that how you roll? Is that how you well, work? Yeah. Um, in a way. So I've heard that too. Actually, just recently someone was telling me about that. Um, and I agree in, yeah, in, certain, yeah. in certain areas, but uh, real estate is such a passive income um, that you – well, like investing in real estate, I should say. So rental properties is such a passive income. You don't need to spend a lot of time on them, especially when you hit your threshold and you get property managers to okay. manage all of them for you. Then you, then it takes like none of your time. Um, but real estate as a agent is what I'm going to spend most of my time. Like I was okay. saying, I really enjoy it. I love helping people and I love explaining the process, you know, just dealing with people. That's like my favorite right now. So I'll be doing that, but investing, being a, like an angel investor, that's my probably ultimate goal once I, once I have the capital for it. No, for sure. In a couple of years, I mean, you're 23. Like I always say, how many millionaires, you know, at 23, like really, can I walk up to someone? Oh, I know it's a 20, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, like, no, I'm, not, not sure. yeah. I'm just saying in general, yeah, yeah. right? Like how many of you know, like you can walk up, shake their hand. Like yeah, that's not an artist of yeah, some sort. Not, yeah. Exactly. So one last thing I want to conclude with, I think this is the most important, you know, I've been waiting to brew this question. How do you feel about the subject of sales? Seriously, that's an important one in my life, obviously. I'm not here to, to sell Why people. Why did you ask that? I want to ask that because as a real estate agent, you have to sell yourself to society. Sell yourself in terms of this is what I'm going to do in the market. This is why I'm better than this person in a sense. How do you feel about the subject of sales? A lot of people have kind of a tainted reputation towards it, but I'm all for it. I'm here to say you got to leverage sales. If you're not leveraging it, then that's when you're going to get swiped over. If you can't sell yourself to a company, to a school, to say this is why I'm more qualified or better, that's where you see a lot of failure. People aren't tapping into that resource. So digress on that for me. So I'll tell you exactly. So that was one of my things I was um, a little bit nervous about, about getting into business as a sales rep. So I'm not the type to push anything on anyone. Um, when I go into a store, I don't like when people push things on me. What I try to offer is, and I learned this from Dave, is a great example of this, is you have to give content. You have to give people information and educate them. If you educate them enough, they'll see you as an expert in that field. 
and then they will want to use you because they, they can relate and because you're giving them information and not pushing them to buy anything, then that's how you really build a good relationship with them. So that's my goal. I'm more, I'm not in the sales um, aspect of real estate. I'm in the relationship making aspect of it. So I want to get to know people and help them out in, as a friend, basically, instead of more as a sales rep. So what I'm doing is I'm making videos that for free, like I'm not charging for, sure. for them, like not like a, what do you call it, a webinar or anything. Yeah, yeah, the web, yeah. videos. That I'm trying to just educate people in the process because if you're a first time home buyer, especially, which we got uh, on Thursday at six o'clock, I believe, um, at NorCal, we're doing a first time home buyer seminar. Yeah, we'll yeah, plug I've that seen in that. there for anyone that, that might be a uh, first time home buyer, yeah, or looking to buy soon. So we're answering just a bunch of questions. So being a first time home buyer, it can be scary. Like even after you buy the house for your first time, you're going to have questions in your head, being like, oh, did I make the right decision? What's going to go wrong? Like, we'll have to change my roof. You know, there's, it's never a for sure thing with anything you do. So you, you're always gonna have questions and that's what we're just here to do is try to answer those questions. For sure. No, I think that's the most important too is because that's all that's all business is, is relationships. Companies have relationships. Yeah. They make deals together through relationships and that's where sales comes in. If you're not selling, uh, you know, the car owner, it's a little bit too extreme I think for that, but he always says if you're not selling, you're not surviving sort of deal. Uh, but that's the most important thing. Without sales in a company, you know, it's gonna it's gonna sink. What boosts revenue? What boosts those margins? It all yeah. comes back to sales. It's just not about being greasy and trying to sell somebody. And I see somebody. I never want them to think, oh yeah, you're a greasy salesman. You're too jacked up. Mm -hmm. I want to go up there and say, hey, I can help you. And say, it's this. I'm gonna have some value. I've done my work. I've done this. And maybe this is good for you. If if you don't like it, I'll ask four more times. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. But yeah, I'll ask four more times and then go from there. But uh, I think sales is probably one of the most important play. It's one of the most imperative things in our society. If you're not able to sell, it's going to really differentiate how you're going to do business. So that's why you have these companies that can sell their ideas to people that can take them and build them. Right. So I'd rather use explain your value than sell. Sell. I use the wrong. I use the term. But no, it's true. It is basically yeah. selling. Sell. So if you can yeah. explain your value, explain your content, then and people can relate to it, then you're making a sale, which is helping them out. Exactly. I mean. Right. Exactly. And I mean sale in a positive way. Like yeah. I'm not saying I'm coming to sell you, I'm coming to take your wallet, take your money. That's that's not what I'm in it for. You know what I mean? I'm in it for influence. That's what I like to do. It's the same as you. I want to educate, I want to influence, I want to be that figure. So in our concluding remarks here, Tristan, do you have anything else you'd like to say? And through that, give them all of your social media so that they have it out there for anyone that maybe doesn't follow you. Yeah, so thanks Connor a lot for having me. Like we're good friends, we hang out all the time. So this is kind of just like what we good times. We go for coffee or whatnot. This is kind of how we just talk. We Surround yourself with people that um, that think like you or that you know can think like you because that, that's a huge difference. Like when me and Connor started talking about work a year and a half ago, I think, yeah, you've been like, like a lot, and we, we just saw the fire in each other's eyes and we're like, let's let's go for it. Um, let's partner on as much things as we can because two heads are better than one and we both we both just want to succeed, to succeed and go as far as we can. So I think like – our partnerships have been very beneficial to both of us and I'm always trying to get more people out and talking about this kind of stuff. Um, so I have uh, my my real estate page, Facebook, Tristan Ritchie Real Estate. Um, I have my Instagram, Real Ritchie, at Real Ritchie. I have my Twitter, Sudbury Real Estate. Estates like with an eight at the end. <laughs> and <laughs> My LinkedIn, you can look me up, Tristan Ritchie, and my Snapchat, Tristan.Ritchie. So if you want to follow me or any of that stuff, ask me any questions. I go for coffee with people all the time just to talk and just learn and maybe give some insight, some help, and I can learn from you too. So it would be great to meet with anyone, really. Absolutely. Honestly, it's been an honest pleasure. This guy's up 6 a.m. every single day, military style, so give him a shout. He'll be waiting for you. So it's been an absolute pleasure, my man. Thanks, Seriously, Connor. thank you so much. Where's my camera? Aiden, where are you? My camera guy. I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's a good guy.